Hi folks, I have an idea on a tool I want to mount to the side of the spindle on the Tormach. I have no idea if it's going to work. But let's use Fusion 360 to design a split clamp on the spindle nose. We use Fusion 360 to run the cam to make it, which will be a ton of fun. We'll machine the part up and we'll see if it works. Welcome to another Wednesday widget from NYC CNC. Okay, new part in Fusion. I will make sure to go at a good pace that folks can follow along, but we don't get bored. So I chose a new circle tool. You may not have a circle tool in that toolbar, and the reason is that you haven't customized your software. Go down to tools you like, like this circle here, and if you just hover over it, you'll see Add to Toolbar. I have the little X because it's already in my toolbar. Very handy. I've got the rectangle project, sketch dimension, and trim on mine. I recommend, honestly, you do the same. So we know the Tormach spindle, it's the same as a bridge port, 3.375 inches. 3.375, enter, enter, and then we'll do the same. And we'll say four and a half, that looks good. Now, we're gonna put the tool off to the side and we'll come back to how we figure out some of the dimensions, but let's just get the model sort of parametrically put together first. So I'll do another circle and I'm gonna say, let's say one and a half, yeah, let's say two. Okay, I'm gonna sketch a line here over to here. If you click the little uh, green check, it keeps the tool active but doesn't continue. Otherwise, you know, you're drawing lines all over the place, which we don't want. And I'll do another line like so. Now, go back to the Select tool, choose the outside of this circle, hold down Control, click on that line, Tangent. See in the sketch palette here, you've got that Tangent option. Now you can see this line is always Tangent to that circle. Same thing, click that line again, OD of that circle, holding down Control, Tangent, perfect. Now if you look, these two are always Tangent. Now, I know this point and that point need to stay in line, so you click those two, horizontal, to vertical, perfect, it went all the way over here, but now look, I think it's kind of cool. Same thing on this bottom line. Don't worry, like so, and then we can actually use the dimension tool to maintain a distance. You know, let's say you want it five, five inches on center. We'll see if that works and we can come back and edit it later if it doesn't. Trim this extra stuff off. And then if you think about it, we're gonna wanna trim this part and that part as well. This part will end up being hollow. Uh, it's a split clamp, so we'll just use a cap screw on the far side. So let's do this. Let's just put in a rectangle. I wanted to mention, it's funny, I was working on this this morning at home before Junior got up, take him to daycare, say goodbye, get to the shop. And that's kind of what's cool about Fusion 360. We did a t test file and it's already there. So I like that. So click here, snapping it to, and you know, we'll just drag it inside here. And let's start dimensioning this. We're gonna want that to be, you know, something, literally, this is how I'm thinking. Something like that. So that's about an inch. So we'll do, let's say 0.875 for fun. And then we want to center it, so click on the center dot of the circle here, 0.875 divided by 2. And just put a dimension on this so that we know it's coming out far enough, 3.25. We can trim some more stuff now. And it, we got to add that split clamp, which we'll actually probably just cut on the DeWalt. We'll get into that later. But we'll model it as a rectangle down here. Um, and we'll just say, it honestly doesn't even matter what it is. Uh, in fact, now that I think about it, we may actually not even want it modeled. Um, but uh, it may cause a, well, we'll see. So trim this, and I think this is actually where you'll see the model really come to life, which I think is cool. So that looks like, oh, actually we're gonna add a circle down here. Just create a circle. 0.4 inches, and then I like this, click on the circle, hold down control, click on that circle, and choose concentric, and that puts them concentric. Now we can right click, press pull, and we'll just type in 0.5, oh, click on the face, now 0.5. Look at that, 
Now we've got to add some more clamps or some more screw holes. Looking at the part, I don't like that recessed in so far. So let's go back and let's see here. Right click on the sketch. Why can't I edit sketch now? There we go. And I want to get rid of that concentric constraint because I don't like it. So click on this, hit delete. And what we'll do now is we can just, we could drag it over, but we want it to maintain horizontal. So click on this point, control that point, horizontal vertical, and then we'll dimension it so we're, we don't have it walk around on us for some reason. And we'll say 5.5, 5.35. Uh, that looks good to me. Stop sketch, updates automatically. I like that better. Now let's put in a screw hole over here, center diameter hole, click on that face. And if we want to show this how you can do it this way, click on there, there, and then you can get a midpoint, which will come down like so. Choose select. Select this, control that, and say construction. Now when we put a circle in here, we've got an easy way to make it centered, 0.25. And what we could do is press pull, and then just drag it all the way through real quick. That gets us a hole. But then the question is, how are you actually going to machine this? So let's think about that. I will probably drill it and tap it, and then cut the split line afterward. So I'm okay with it as is for now. We'll come back to it in the cam. And then over here, let's see if we can figure this out. If I can, can I put a, ooh, I cannot. So now I got a little problem. I want to put a, a hole through the end of that to tighten down the tool. Okay, so we need to put a, a plane in over here. Let's do construct, and tangent plane looks right. But if we choose this, it's at an angle, um, may not work. T click on top, and then will it snap to? Yes. Uh, is that correct? I hope so. Actually, I mean, for this part, it won't really matter. No, that's not, that is at an angle. That's no good. Um, it says you can also, for the angle, can you just choose another face? Oh, there you go. Ah, look at that. Cool. Uh, let's go back to the top view and zoom in. Make sure I'm not full. Of, yeah, no, that's definitely snap too. There we go. Circle on that face. And right here we'll do a line. And choose select, make it construction, and a circle. Right on center, 0.25. Enter, right click, press pull. Boom. That'll be our thread, quarter 20 threaded hole to secure down the tool. Let's uh, run some tool paths. Actually, this is awesome. It just occurred to me, use CAD intelligently. Tormach already makes all of its machines available as solid models. Let's download one, import it into Fusion, put the part in place, sort of simulate it, make sure it's going to fit before we go through the hassle of making our tool pass and let alone machining a part. Also, I hadn't forgot to save my part. And I think Fusion, I know Fusion does auto saving, but I don't know that it doesn't until you've saved it once. So make sure when you start a project to uh, name and save the file for one time, that'll save your butt um, if anything happens. Dormach, solid model. It's showing me that I've already looked for this, which is cheating, but oh well. So here we go, Tormach solid models. PCNC 1100, scroll down, PCNC 1100 solid models, boom. So now we'll go into the show data panel. I don't, still don't love this part of Fusion, but maybe I'm just getting used to it. Click upload. I'm using the step file, so we're just gonna drag it right here and click upload. I also, this is a one and a half meg model. I have noticed, eh, maybe it's a little better this morning, um, we don't have great internet here in Ohio, so sometimes it seems slow, and I don't know whether that's the importing process on their end or the upload bandwidth on my end. Uh, we'll get this thing uploaded here. All right, close. Now, this process, in my opinion, is not at all intuitive, and this is how I've 
think I figured it out. I welcome suggestions. Before we do anything else, right click on the bodies and choose create components from bodies. That gives us this component right here, which we'll rename as spindle clamp. And in theory, well, yeah. Now we've done that, we've got a component. Now right click on the model and choose insert into current design. There it is. Um, you can't move it around by clicking on it, but you can move it around with these little arrows, which at first I thought were kind of easy to miss. But anyway, you get the idea. Get it, I'm just going to get it out of the way of the clamp here. Click OK. You can tear the part of machine apart right now, which is not what we want to do. So undo that. Right click on this. So we've got this new file here. Right click, and we'll ch choose rigid group. Seemed to work for me. Now it's a rigid group. And I don't even... Oh, click OK. Yeah, so now you've got a solid machine, which is fine for what we're doing. We need to ground it, or I would say fix it, so right click and choose ground, click continue, and that locks it in place, which is, what, again, what we want for this. You've got these light bulbs. Again, you can turn them off and on to see and not see stuff. Great. Now all we've got to do is click and close this window. We can click assemble. And we'll just scroll down here. We'll choose the inside of this ring. And then we'll choose the spindle nose. And the motion components, uh, they don't always, I've, I have been confused by some of this as well. There's Re Revolute and there's Cylindrical. I thought when you hovered over them, you got, oh, there you go. You get previews. Um, so I don't know what the difference is actually between Revolute, I guess, locks it and just lets it revolve. Cylindrical lets it go up and down and revolve. The cylindrical is the one that I had the most luck with because what we want to do is kind of see what it looks like. So if we want to edit that, we can go back, right click here and choose edit joint and we could change it to Revolute, click OK, and then that um, locks it up and down but still lets it turn it, that's fine. Most importantly, what I wanted to see here was that our tool will clear the spindle housing above it and with plenty of room and we could you know, modify our design if we wanted to, I think we're good to go.